Hey everyone, it is Derek Weeks with the Linux Foundation. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here and I am here to give you your bi-weekly update on what's been going on within the Linux Foundation. So uh, we've had a number of exciting things going on in the past couple of weeks that have kept us all really busy. So uh, let's dive into them. So first of all, you might have heard that uh, last week, Meta transitioned the PyTorch, uh, transitioned PyTorch to the Linux Foundation. Uh, it will now live within the PyTorch Foundation inside the LF. Uh, really exciting news that that happened there. And I think that you know one of the primary reasons why PyTorch moved was to give it a more neutral home than what it had uh, at Meta and also uh, make more resources available to it uh, in the community for education, for training, for collaboration that the uh, the Linux Foundation can provide. Uh, if you didn't catch the news last week, read one of our blogs on the Linux Foundation site or read the blogs on the, the PyTorch site and want to catch a little more, we actually have a live fireside chat coming up with Dr. Ibrahim Haddad, he's going to be the executive director of the PyTorch Foundation and one of my colleagues here at the LF. Uh, but he's going to be having this chat with Samit Chintala, who is one of the co-creators of PyTorch uh, and has been working on that project uh, since the, the very beginning. So a uh, really exciting fireside chat that is coming up uh, next week. I believe it's September 28th. Uh, but check that out on linuxfoundation.org. Just go into our uh, resources and webinars uh, page and you'll see that there. Uh, additionally, uh, we launched a new training course, PyTorch and Deep Learning for Decision Makers. So if you're wondering what is PyTorch, how can I be using it? Uh, it, it is a machine learning framework uh, that is used by over 18,000 organizations now, but if you want to learn a little more about the business impact of PyTorch and what it could mean to your organization, definitely uh, take a look at that training. It's online and free and available from Linux Foundation's training and certification uh, business. I'll, I'll also say, if you're really interested in the backstory of, uh, of PyTorch and Sumit, who's uh, one of the co-creators, a PyTorch just released earlier this morning on all your major podcast uh, channels. Uh, our latest version of the Untold Stories of Open Source uh, features Summit. Uh, and uh, I was just listening to it. Haven't completed the, the whole episode, but maybe halfway through. Uh, some great background on his history and kind of what led him from the earliest stages of childhood and his, his interest in computers through his uh, maybe atypical uh, 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 progress through education and different uh, universities uh, and thought leaders that he had worked with uh, in the industry before uh, co-creating PyTorch. So a fascinating story, definitely worth tuning into that. Again, the untold stories of open source, uh, just Google search and you'll find it on Spotify, uh, Amazon, Audible, and other uh, other channels there. So, uh, and again, just released this morning uh, on that. So what do we have next? Uh, things that we introduced last week, the uh, Open Wallet Foundation, uh, we announced last week when we are all in Dublin uh, at Open Source Summit Europe. This is the intent to build uh, the Open Wallet Foundation. This will uh, likely form officially later this year. Uh, but if you think about what Open Wallet's going to uh, to be, do and be focused on, think about what's in your wallet uh, today, whether it's money, whether it's ID, whether it's health insurance cards, whether it might be the, the key to your new uh, automobile, those types of things. How do we get them from your physical wallet to, uh, to your phone or the thing that you carry around that can house that uh, that information. And uh, the, the Open Wallet Foundation is not going to uh, determine or, or build any new standards. They're not going to build a wallet uh, itself, but they're going to look at how do we collaborate across industry to build uh, capabilities for anyone to build their technology or their data or their information into these wallets 
that can be more interoperable across any platform. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you're interested in learning more or getting involved in that, go to openwallet.foundation. Uh, you can learn more about the efforts there that we've announced. Now, as we were in, uh, in Dublin, which is an awesome city, we all had a really good time exploring the Temple Bar area there, uh, uh, among others, and visiting the great restaurants, sampling the, the great food and beer that they have uh, in the city. We also spent time announcing Linux Foundation Europe. So uh, if you went to linuxfoundation.eu, uh, you can visit our new site there, learn more about Linux Foundation Europe. Uh, the site is available in local languages, so uh, we have uh, English versions, German versions, French, Italian, and Spanish versions of the site that you can access to, up at the top. Just click on the globe, and you can uh, view and read that site in your own local language. Uh, but kind of why did we pull together a Linux Foundation Europe uh, in the first place? There are a lot of reasons from where open source is going in Europe, the investments that open source uh, in Europe it is getting uh, in supporting billions and billions of dollars in innovation uh, in the region, but also working with uh, academic researchers uh, and universities within the region, as well as government institutions that want to build more open source programs into their, uh, into their practices. One of the great examples that was revealed last week on stage in Dublin when we were talking about launching Linux Foundation Europe came from SAP. Uh, they were talking about at the very beginning of the COVID pandemic, uh, the German government came to them and said, we really need help with contact tracing and uh, you know, developing programs that can help us manage uh, all of these different kinds of efforts that, that we we're trying to deal with during the pandemic and the government, the German government was reaching out to them for their development expertise. And as soon as they got into this and said, yes, you know, we'll do anything to support this, they realized they needed certainly more than just SAP involved and whether that was local governments or other businesses or healthcare, what have you to work on and collaborate on this. Uh, they also realized that efforts like that should not live within SAP, that they should have should be housed within the open source community. Uh, and so for a specific effort like that, that was initiated by the German government involving German uh, entities, it wouldn't make sense to say if we want to open source an initiative like that, to have it go and be housed at the Linux Foundation. While we're a global entity, you know, a lot of people could say, well, that's kind of housing it outside of Europe or housing it in this, this global home. Why not have something closer to home? And the Linux Foundation Europe now provides an opportunity for open source projects or initiatives like that to thrive within their, uh, their own regions and be more specific to what's going on there. Um, we did release our European Spotlight report from LF Research as well uh, last week. So, uh, again, go to linuxfoundation.org. We have a new website, or newly designed. It's a lot easier to navigate. Look in our research section and you can find it there. You can also find it on linuxfoundation.eu. And it talks about open source practices and public and private sector. It talks about open source program offices. It talks about how open source is influencing billions of dollars in innovation across the region. Uh, so definitely worth checking that out there. Uh, now, moving forward, uh, some couple other things coming up. We have Open3DCon coming up uh, in mid-October. That's October 17th through 19th in Austin. Uh, they just introduced a metaverse track there within the, the conference. We have a couple of different speakers. Uh, Bryce Edelstein uh, Lelbach from uh, NVIDIA is going to be on the agenda, as well as Deb Nicholson from the Python Software Foundation. And of course, our GM uh, at Open3D Foundation, Royal O'Brien, is going to be on the agenda there. So uh, if you want to learn more about what's happening in the metaverse or what's happening in Open3D gaming uh, and initiatives there with Open3D Engine and other projects uh, under that foundation, uh, head to Austin in mid-October. Uh, we also have in mid-October, toward the end, October 24th through the 28th, I and others will be in Detroit, Michigan for KubeCon, 
uh, in Cloud Native Con North America. Uh, so I, a, a always a spectacular show. Thousands of attendees there in person as well as online. Uh, keynotes for that are going to be announced shortly. I know hotels are in really short demand or, or high, I should say, high demand. So they're hard to find. Uh, but uh, definitely uh, sign up for KubeCon. We can see you there either in person or virtually. So uh, I know we have our chat is open for uh, any questions that uh, coming in from the community. So uh, I'll take uh, take a look at those as they come into the chat. Um, I see one particular question uh, that has come in here. Uh, what will the Linux Foundation Europe to be doing uh, doing to help open source in Europe? Uh, so I, I of course covered that a little before uh, in this update, but there are a lot of initiatives, not only just in software, uh, but open hardware initiatives. You may be familiar with uh, Risk Five that is uh, is uh, initiated or uh, run out of Switzerland uh, within Europe. Uh, so, open hardware initiatives around semiconductors and semiconductor architectures that Risk Five uh, is leading. Open data and open standards initiatives that are very important to the region can also be. Uh, housed out of Linux Foundation Europe. Um, we have a ton of different companies that have uh, come in to be part of this um, that, that are based in Europe, that have projects that, that they want to bring in uh, and create new standards uh, for data uh, and, and governance across uh, open source within the region. So definitely take, uh, take a look at that. Um, the, uh, let's see, other questions. Um, uh, let's see, does PyTorch, uh, what is on the horizon for PyTorch uh, and interoperability with other projects? So the best way to get, get an understanding of what's getting uh, going on with PyTorch is to just dive into the, the, uh, the project itself. Uh, PyTorch.org has loads of information, uh, information, content, tutorials, uh, videos, documentation online. They have, I think, about 10 introduction uh, tutorial videos uh, that, that are there that you can uh, work through that were built uh, by the PyTorch team and PyTorch community. So I would definitely start to dive in there. And also there's some great videos on the site of various use cases from uh, anything from help, uh, you know, better, uh, uh, veterinary clinics helping uh, pets to Amazon improving shopping experiences to Dolby uh, improving sound in, in different uh, environments uh, and you name it the uh, Tesla of course with uh, with self-driving car uh, and a whole host of other use cases that are there described by the people that are using PyTorch within those environments um, but uh, as well, as I mentioned earlier, we have a fireside chat with Ibrahim and Sumit next week uh, on, I think it's September 28th. Check out our webinars page at uh, linuxfoundation.org to find more there. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any other questions and we've been about uh, 13 minutes in. So I'm going to tune off uh, or tune out for this week and, uh, and end the stream, but definitely come back, subscribe, follow us uh, more and uh, certainly follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn uh, and other social channels that you may follow uh, for more updates on what's happening with the Linux Foundation. That's about it. And I'll see you again in a few weeks. Bye.